Hello everyone, this is Admiral Playerovsky bringing you Atlantic Fleet, back of the Atlantic, continued as Britain. We are in week 0 0.5 of July 1940. We're holding on to our 12 blue squares on the Tanage Wall. We have unfortunately lost 8, but we're holding on to the, onto the 12 that we currently have. We did dip below, we had 11, blue and 9 red but we reclaimed one so ugh. shaky I know but we are just about hanging on I don't know we're still in it right let's check scop flow first of all first order of business brazen is out in two turns that's fine and now I need to move the oh I, I can't move them back Oh, never mind. Scratch that then. Oh, that's not a good engagement to start things off. In the Canary Islands, in cloudy weather, in week 0 0.5 of July 1940, the destroyer Vega has come under attack at noon from the light cruiser Karlsruhe. The light cruiser has the initiative. Realistically. Realistically, the absolute best I can hope for here is that we force them to turn away damaged. Because I don't see how we can win this. 70. Oh, maybe you can make a run for it, perhaps. How fast are they? 32, and we are. 34. Do you know what? Yes. Call me a coward, but I will try and run away. I will try and run away. Because there's no real way I, I see myself being able to... Oh, for goodness sake! To take on a... Well... Well, no, well, now I'm going to stay and fight because because I can't run at top speed. The whole thing, ah, oh, the whole point of this was that I run at top speed, and then that way they can't get at me. But now, what's the what's the point? Can I even shoot at them? Am I even in range, or would I have to get closer to them to, to even do any damage? Oh, this is a bad start, I will admit. It's a bit a very bad start. Um, I don't know, just open fire. Shoot. So we're not even in range. Well, at least you've had the decency to miss this time. Uh, we're not going to be able to outrun them. We're just not going to be able to outrun them. And that's the problem that I face. Unfortunately, whether I like it or not, I can't outrun them anymore. 29.1, I'll go 30.9. Apparently we need to drop it by a huge amount. Shoot. We'll see whether that's true or not. Drop, yes, maybe not by that much. Probably 32, 33 would have been a bit better. Well, at least they've missed us again. Probably do. I'll go 20 degrees. 20 degrees to port, and just try and close in that way. Right. Um. So that was 28.6. They're saying now. I'm actually going to increase that to 32. Even though we have closed in a little bit. Shoot. Well, 
One hit. Yes! Right on the bow. It, it won't do much to them, if anything, but at least we've got light damage now. And we're going to have probably heavy damage. I mean, we're going to be probably sunk at the end of this, but... Um, yeah. What's been damaged? Main spotter, main radar, AAA, heavy damage. Unfortunately, this this was to be expected, especially after their first salvo. I mean, their first salvo was absolutely devastating. It was just... It just hit, and, and it just put any... It stopped any hope of me being able to get out of this alive, I think. Personally. Shoot! So we were long this time. I think it might be time to turn and do a bit of broadside fire. Or not, it could be time to sink already. Right, well, well, there you go. Um, if you have ever wondered why a destroyer cannot face off against a light cruiser, this is the exact reason why. Because a light cruiser is too strong for a destroyer. Maybe a tribal class could possibly do it, but I don't have any tribal class destroyers. This was a VW class. Let's check the final damage upon sinking. Not that different to what it was before. Main spotter, main radar, heavy damage, triple A destroyed. So that's obviously a very bad start for us. We lost the destroyer immediately. If we had two destroyers, maybe this would have been a different different you know outcome perhaps. But unfortunately that's not what happened. We had one destroyer in. It's because we were hunting down that German destroyer that was constantly destroying and sinking shipping in the Sargas OC. That's what that's what the problem was. It completely threw the um, threw my um, my fleets off balance. I'd never have a single destroyer patrolling an area of high activity. Oh, yes, I know what you're saying, but what about the East Greenland Sea? What about the Faroe Islands? You, you often have just one destroyer there. That's true, I do. But those aren't regions with intense activity in terms of convoys. Whereas here, it, it is. It's a very high, high intensity area. One of the highest, I'd say. Well, there we go. I hope you're happy with what you've done. You will, of course, be punished for this at a later date, but nevertheless, here is our first action report for this episode. On the British side, the destroyer Vigo was sunk for 1,300 tons. On the German side, the light cruiser Karlsruhe received light damage. Warship tons sunk on the, on the British side, 1,300. Merchant ship tons sunk on the British side, zero. Nothing sunk in either category on the German side, zero renown earned. It's a bad start. Oh, not this again. I swear I restarted this game and it and it's still it's still doing this. Right, have we got any stronger destroyers here? We've got an A class over here. Could we perhaps move these guys up here then? Into, into the Canary Islands, and then move the Vanek down here, perhaps. Uh, why can't I move the B still? Oh my gosh, it's still week 0 0.5 of July 1940. Please let me move the Suffolk and Sheffield. This isn't even funny anymore now. Gulf of Guinea. Week 0 0.5 of July 1940, Allied merchants attacked by submarines, 54,780 tons of merchant shipping sunk. United Kingdom, submarine attacked by enemy aircraft, U-88 has received medium damage in week 0 0.5 of July 1940, that's good.
Right, week 1 of July. Can I move the... Yes. Finally. Honestly, I was about to, I was about to say. I'm getting a bit ridiculous now. Uh, should we send them down, perhaps? Go on, we'll run, we'll run away. We'll run away. We might as well. That unfortunately means that... Well, they're un unescorted as well. Uh, we can move these about. We lost a destroyer though, so we can replace that. I don't like this. We're now going to be dropping again. Ah, uh, let's have a look. What sort of destroyer should we go for? I'm going to go for a B class, I think. We don't have any A class. We'll go for a B class then. The brilliant. Right, uh, brilliant, you're going to go straight into here and escort the um, Exeter. A caster will go across down here or, or across to here. Uh, well, no, we can send the, um, the Sheffield back here. Ajax can go back up here. Suffolk can go well here, I suppose. And a caster can go here. Right, I think we're broadly speaking there. Have we lost a square? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes we have. And the reason for that is probably because we're above 150,000 again in terms of shipping sunk. Right. It's, it's you again, isn't it? In the Azor Isles, in sunny weather, in week 1 of July 1940, the destroyers Ilex and Jervis have come under attack at night from the light cruiser Karlsruhe. Karlsruhe has the initiative. I think this would be a good moment to sink you. Move on! <laughs> How cute. How cute. Right. You're trying to make your way back, but unfortunately I will deny you that. I'm going to make smoke straight away, get to within about 4,000 or so yards, and then unleash torpedoes. The good news is they've basically wasted their initiative here. Star shell. You can fire the star shell all you want. It's not going to to, to work for you. Making smoke right from the get go. It's not going to work. You have absolutely no idea what sort of elevation to fire at here. See? Told ya. Told ya. You don't know. 5092. Do you know what? Out oh, of starboard. Stand by the torpedo tubes. Here we go. We're already ready to fire. 4600. How many torpedoes do we need to take out the car? Door? More than you're thinking. More than you're thinking because they are moving very quickly. They could be turning and doing all sorts of things. So, 8.3, I'll say 8.2 hits immediately. I am going to go for 1.2 over here. I will go for 3.2. I will go with 5.2. And oof. do I leave it at three or do I? No, I'm going to do one more. I need need this to definitively be the end. Seven point two, and just in case they try and turn, pull some sort of funny business, I'll go nine point two. This is in case they try and turn, so please don't think I'm being silly by putting a torpedo here. If they try and turn, this this one could actually prove to be quite decisive. It's half of your torpedoes, my dear, but we need 
this. And we need this to work. Fire away, please. Um, yeah, go on, you continue to make smoke. Oh, they've decided to go for torpedoes as well. Unfortunately, that's not going to be a good choice on this occasion. Why? Well, here's why. Bye-bye! That's for sinking my destroyer earlier. You bully. You're a bully, that's what you are. Four torpedoes hit. Um, no real chance of light cruiser would survive. Four torpedo hits. So they are now sinking. Good. I'm sure you don't like it, do you? Yeah. I bet you weren't thinking of that when you were sinking my destroyer, were you? I wonder how those people feel. You just wanted to sink it and that's it. Right, well, well, very good job, Ilex. Um, let's call that done. Action report. On the British side, the destroyers Ilex and Jervis received absolutely no damage whatsoever. On the German side, the light cruiser Karlsruhe was sunk for 7,700 tons. Nothing sunk in either category on the British side, 7,700 warship tons sunk on the German side, zero merchant ship tons sunk on the German side, 7,700 were now earned. For goodness sake, honestly, when I start recording the next one I'm literally going to have to restart my entire computer it would seem, because restarting the game has not worked at all in the slightest. Uh, right, seeing as you have, you you couldn't quite intercept the. Oh no, not this again! No, this is going to be so hard. Not being able to move the ships about when I want to move them about. Brazen has been in Scarborough for what seems like not two turns, but two eternities. Right, can I move them now? Yes. Oh, and is Brazen out as well? Oh yes. Oh, thank goodness. Right, good. We're sort of back to where we should have kind of technically always have been. Right, well, there we go. Um, Iceland. I Allied merchants attacked by submarines. 51,180 tons of merchant shipping sunk in week 1.5 of July 1940. Aha! These raiders here have now moved into Scarpa Flow. So we'll we'll sort those out. Faroe Islands, partially sunny weather, week 1.5 of July 1940. The destroyers Antelope and Sejune have come under attack at night from the submarines U-166 and U-84. These submarines have the initiative. Right, let's take a look at how things stand. Uh, which way are we going? Yeah, you're going to be focusing on the other one down here. Where is it? Is that it over there? Yes, it is. Right, you. There we go. 7,000, that's a little bit too far away. You're not too far away at all, though. Backwards, harder pull, stand by the torpedo tubes. Yeah, this will be a very simple engagement, hopefully. Well, at least this part of it, hopefully, will be. I don't think 3,300 is point blank range for them. So even if they did fire torpedoes now, I think that they would be too far away. U84 is five torpedoes. That's not a problem. Plenty of time to um, to act. U-166 already sunk. That's for sinking that convoy earlier. You bullies. I don't like bullies like that. 
I think a little turn to starboard should just about work here. Good. Um, how are you doing, Sajune? Um, we're doing very well, aren't you? Um, go on. 25 degrees flank. Join your friend over there. Even though your friend is perfectly capable of doing this alone. So new action from U84. We saw plenty of action last turn with all those torpedoes fired. Right, so turn and fire on the next turn. Are you in danger from the torpedoes? Not really, no. Right, well continue on as you have been. Uh, these are going to continue on. Yeah, that's fine. No action from U84. Harder starboard stand by the torpedo tubes. We've got eight. Easily able to take out a submarine with eight torpedoes. Drop and splash and off you go, my lovely. Uh, Sajune, you have got torpedoes heading towards you, but I've got plenty of time to avoid them. We're perfectly all right over here now. Um, those are going to... Oh, they're going to run out of steam as well. Yeah, you fired. It's too late. I'm afraid that's too late. There we go, that's U-84 sunk. That's also for sinking that convoy in Iceland. You're also a bully. Action report. On the British side, the destroyers Antelope and Sajune received completely no damage whatsoever. On the German side, the submarine U-166 was sunk for 1,032 tons. The submarine U-84 was sunk for 800 tons. Nothing sunk in either category on the British side. Warship tons sunk on the German side, 1,832. Zero merchant ship tons sunk on the German side, 1,832 were now earned. Wow, wow, wow. Maybe these were the submarines that were in Iceland then. Or maybe all four of them were together as a wolf pack, and then they split off half this way and then half down to wreak havoc somewhere here. But either way, we're in the western approaches in cloudy weather in week 1.5 of July 1940. The destroyers Active and Boreas have come under attack at noon from the submarine U-167 and U-93. The submarines have the initiative. Right, U-167, no messing about. Torpedo is fired immediately. U-93, no action. Right, um... Flank, harder starboard, I do believe that that should clear those. Yes, it has. It's a big ask. Any air support? No. Alright, fine. We'll, we'll just have to do this the old fashioned way. Relatively speaking, old fashioned. In real life, of course, destroyers didn't attack U boats with, um, with torpedoes. Are going to head off that way? Will they run out of steam? I hope they run out of steam before they reach my other destroyer, because otherwise we could be in trouble. Continue the turn. Still 6,700 yards away. Uh, can I see the torpedoes already? No. Uh, if I just go forwards then. Can I get away with that? Well, I hope so. Yeah, they're still a long way away. I'll make a decision now as to what to, what exactly I should be doing with regards to... Um, I think it's the, is it the Boreas destroyer here. Go on. 
20 degrees to starboard should put us on course with the U-boat which it well it almost does right can I see the torpedoes now oh is that one over there yes it is uh, mm, oh there they are yep that's that's one two three where's the fourth one over here right I can just go forwards then and that'll that'll clear them that's no problem at all good and they've run out of steam anyway so that's that's fine as well U167 fires one torpedo away but it's not going to be a big threat uh, it's, it's something that we can very easily avoid a very small five degree turn to starboard should just about ensure that that torpedo doesn't score any damage on us uh, 5,420. I think we're still just a little bit too far away. Just a tiny bit. I close in now. Yeah, 4,700, and that's basically the absolute, well, the furthest we can be on firing. No way would we have closed that gap so quickly if I would have turned. But now, Stand by the torpedo tubes, and we can turn and fire. Is this going to be one of those occasions where we sink two submarines at once? I think it could be. Oh, wouldn't that be nice? A drop and splash for the first one. Let's have a look at the second one. Yes! Oh, this will be so satisfying. Stand by the torpedo tubes. Let's put another one in. Once again, drop and splash. Here we go. Oh, this will be so nice to see two submarines exploding at the same time. Yeah, 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 whatever. You've got your silly little torpedo going this way. No action, no action. Yes, there we go. One and two over there. Oh, that is satisfying. That's a very satisfying moment. Very, very nice. I shall call that done. Action report on the British side. The destroyers Axiv and Boreas received no damage whatsoever. On the German side, the submarine U-167 was sunk for 1,032 tons. The submarine U-93 was sunk for 800 tons. Nothing sunk in either category on the British side. Warship ton sunk on the German side, 1,832. Merchant ship ton sunk on the German side, zero. 1,832 In the North Baltic Seas, in week 1.5 of July 1940, submarine attacked by enemy aircraft. U-95 receives medium damage. Good. Oh, now then. Battle of Britain time, it seems. Um, United Kingdom. Axis bombers attack the naval base at Liverpool, Portsmouth, causing light damage. Current repairs delayed by two turns in week 1.5 of July 1940. Right. Hmm. Mind you, in July the Germans were very much fighting in the West, so that's not entirely that surprising. Um, but I think I'm going to leave it here for now. We'll just do a quick update on the um, the stats. It's week 2 of July 1940. 14 naval vessels sunk on the British side. Uh, 465 merchants sunk for 1.7 million tons. 106 naval vessels sunk for Germany for almost 300,000 tons. Unfortunately, however, 156,000 tons is being sunk per month in terms of allied shipping, allied merchants. So that's not good. We haven't lost another square on the tonnage war, have we? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
No, I, I was, I was, I knew we'd lost nine. I, think, I was thinking that we've lost ten already, but we haven't. Uh, we're still hanging on just about. We have a look at the ships lost on both sides. You pretty much get the picture. Um, yeah, we've, we've, we're, we're doing much better. We have still maintained our seven to one kill ratio. Could we say eight to one, perhaps? No, we'd need another six naval vessels for Germany sunk and none sunk on our side. So one to seven it is so far. Possibly rising to one, one to eight. Possibly, but I'm not going to promise one to eight for now because um, it's going to be difficult. We'll have to sink six ships for Germany and not lose anything ourselves minimum to get 1 to 8 but anyway enough of me rambling on that is all from Admiral Plerowski for this video if you enjoy the content if you're enjoying the series then leave a like and subscribe thank you for watching this video I hope to see you in my next video bye bye for now